What's going on, guys? XJ here. Um, first time doing one of these build videos, but uh, figured I'd give this one a shot because I was running on this for a while on stream, and a few of my friends were asking about how to, you know, go about playing this and all that. Uh, what I'm doing here is it's a different variation on the Minolt heel, Archon, you know, Veers, you know, all that, all that, uh, that set. For it's only for group play. So this is only for four mans, not threes. Twos doesn't really work that well. Uh, you need the survivability of the the monk and the uh, barbarian to even like stay alive, because you're going to be out of archon. As you can see, I'm in convention of elements, so you don't have zodiac. You're basically out of archon for a long time. Um, little disclaimer: I did not create this build. Like, there is a streamer from Korea that. I first saw doing this, I'll probably butcher his name if I say it, but I'll put his Twitch link in the description. He's a pretty good Wiz player. He was rank 1 for a while in the world, but then uh, Eternal took over a little bit. So, it's all credit to him. I just took whatever he was running and kind of put it together because it looked really cool. So, um, yeah, sk we'll go over skills first. Let's uh, start with the, the ones on my mouse, I guess. We got Spectral Blades with the Ice. This is your cold Talrasha proc. There's nothing really better to run here because you need all four elements, and this is the best of the possible skills to run to proc your cold. Um, you know, it's basic chilled enemies, 5% chance to be frozen. So sometimes you can freeze enemies. That helps you survive a little bit, so it's not the worst. And obviously Force Armor, these these two are the same, Force Armor and Magic Weapon. Absolutely mandatory, uh, both of these. Because you're going to be, like I said, out of Archon for about, I think, 18 seconds or something. Or maybe, no, that's too long, sorry. It's like 9 seconds, but you need Deflection, Force Armor. Keeps you alive. Uh, Black Hole Spell Steal, you know, get that extra damage. Because you only have, essentially, a 5 second window roughly to do, or four second window to do damage. So Black Hulk gives you that, that five second huge damage buff when dealing with those four man groups where everything's pulled together nicely. So <clears throat> basically mandatory. You can probably some, run something else for lowers, but this is a really high end group farming build. Like I wouldn't use this in anything under 95 probably because the other version is um, probably better, I would say, because you have more more Archons per Rift, and more Archons means more stuff dies faster. This builds for, like, absolutely blowing up elites at the higher tiers when they have, I don't know, 200 trillion health or something. Um, so, yeah, Black Hole's good. Teleport, Safe Passage. I would say this is mandatory. Uh, any Anything that gives you less damage, 25% reduced damage for 5 seconds. The cooldown is not as long as the buff with this build, so you'll always have that 25% less damage buff, so you can stand in the sanctuary with the monks and just kind of hang out until you're ready to go, or you could just kind of teleport around if there's like arcanes and uh, moltens, all that stuff. I'll get into the gameplay later, but yeah, arcane, oh, no, not arcane, but yeah, teleport, very good. And then obviously archon, archon with combustion. This also serves as your lightning proc, even though it's not obviously the rune, but um, you do lightning after you pop the Archon, so it's, it counts as two stacks, so you don't have to have a lightning skill like Arcane Torrent on your bar or Electrocute, for example. So, yeah, that's the skills. Passives are the exact same as the other builds, so don't have to change anything there. You know, Power Hungry, Cooldown. This is really helpful. And Paralysis. Let's go on to the the uh, gear. The gear is very important. This I don't expect you to like have the gear for this because it's very dependent on max CDR everywhere. And what I mean by that is you you need 62.6, .6, this exact number or more, to actually fully utilize convention of elements. One second. So the way it works is you pop convention of elements you watch the buff when it's about here ish one second left you can see that one more like 
about this this quadrant up in the top left here that's when you pop the archon and then it on the fire proc and then it will go to lightning for four seconds and then you know it'll rotate through the the rest of the elements so basically the uh, typical rotation you'll wait for archon on the fire pop it and then you'll do your lightning during the lightning cycle after you use your black hole and you do tons of damage so it's very important to meet that cycle without that you can't really use this build unless you want to be extremely inefficient and wait another archon cycle like see now it'll rotate through the elements and I'll miss a cycle because of something that I'll tell you in one second see now it's fire and it's gonna be lightning after this and I'm still not done so you're probably thinking like how does this work if you if you miss a cycle well you run Gogok gem and you have to have 15 stacks before you pop the archon otherwise you'll miss a, you'll miss an entire cycle like, I, like you just saw you lose a ton of damage you have to wait an entire I think it's 12 seconds or so before these rotate to light, uh, fire again next goes that cold then it goes fire and then light yeah, so it's about 12 seconds that you lose you could pop archon but then you mess yourself up through the whole rift and it's it's really timing dependent, so you got to pay super attention to that buff. Uh, and under the gear, like I said, you need max CDR, so it's 10 on the weapon, 8 on the gloves, 8 on one ring, 8 on the other ring, 8 on the shoulders, in the, in the helmet you get the gem for 12.5, and paragons you get the 10, wherever that is, 10 on the paragons and evocation so it should put you to well it will it will put you to 62.6 and then gogok puts you to 67 point something it doesn't really matter what it is as long as you have 62 you could have more like i have for example i have this amulet that i could wear instead and it puts me up to 64 or whatever it gets more lenient on when you when you can pop the archon like you can pop it on two seconds of fire for example or like three seconds left and you'll have that cycle Base, you won't miss a cycle but I, I choose to use the same because there's more more better stats if that one had like double crit and cooldown I'd probably use it but we can't all be that lucky so I just use this one uh, these three gems are mandatory as well I uh, absolutely need Zay's, absolutely need Stricken, you're the, you're the RG killer in the group and Zay's is just too good to pass up. And like I said, Gogok for the it makes actually Gogok makes the whole build work, so that's the best one. Uh, basically, it's same gear wise as the non conventional elements build. So you can have you know you can have Veer's head instead of Telrasha. You can have different gloves, different pants, but you need Veer's boots, um, Veer's pauldrons, and this chest should be Talrashic says attack speed roll under it. So I, I I'm sure people already know that this is a basically a guide for advanced. Like if you're trying to go above and beyond with your with your archon, I don't recommend this starting out in groups. It's better to use the other builds unless you have all the gear. But um ideal rolls on this you would have you would have cool you need cooldown ten percent. So you need cooldown uh, the damage damage is not that great here. If I, I I've only gotten one of these in my entire like time of playing, so I didn't really spend much time into this. As you can see, this is not augmented. My COE is not even ancient. Uh, my blood bracers are not augmented, so it's kind of it's kind of non optimized. But I still managed to do a one on one with this build just because of how strong the burst damage is, and I'll I'll show some gameplay of that in the once I get done with uh, the gear. So yeah, percent damage, ideally attack speed because um, attack speed is obviously the best stat for this class besides cooldown because you want to attack a lot of times, proc more than all, do more damage. It's very good. So that's, that's the best I got. So like the um, the affix doesn't really matter if you do 150%. You're not really doing damage with spectral blades. Spectral blades is just there to be something to use for one, getting deflection up, which keeps you alive, and two, for stacking stricken on the RG. 
it stacks stricken better than any other of your primary skills because of the affix on this 50% faster attack speed so you're just getting all all the stricken and you can just blow the RG up uh, alternatively you can obviously you can equip starfire cube this if you have a, a really good starfire and you don't have an ancient uh, fragment of destiny which is possible so uh, Swami you know Grand G or same thing you could cube the cube the convention and equip Grandeur if it has 8 cooldown, you know, you never know. Because the most important stat on the convention is the 200% bonus damage. Gives you a flat 3x multiplier. So think of whatever you're doing right now with, with your Archon, and then triple it. That's the damage this build does. It's pretty good. And um, obviously Manal Teal, you want cooldown on this. Crit's good. Uh, you can go attack speed crit. You can double crit cooldown. As long as it has cooldown, it's pretty decent, honestly. Uh, gloves, obviously, I have like really good ones, but you can have you can have like int, int double crit and cooldown. That's fine. Uh, pauldrons, basically same thing. Ideally, you have uh, res all to life, but it doesn't really matter as long as you have the cooldown, you know, for the for the groups. Uh, basic basic head int vite crit uh, amulet. You can, uh, honestly, you can go for two crits in cooldown if you have one of those. But in double crit will do just fine if you have it cooldown everywhere else. Uh, chest piece, standard stuff. Uh, double stats, invite. Attack speed, life. You can also go for um, armor here if you want. I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't matter too much about the... Uh, I like life because it synergizes well with your force armor. Uh, Fazulas, you know... Standard. This is all standard stuff. You know, invite. Ideally, have armor instead of resol, but I couldn't find one. So, pants. Same thing. Invite armor. Boots. Invite armor again. Move speed's cool because you can like take off points of move speed and your paragons put them all to vite or intelligence, so you have more damage. Uh, source is the same as the other build too. Uh, damage range int. Crit cooldown. And I guess in the perfect world, you would have no uh, arcane power on crit. You could have elite damage here. I'm not sure what this actually rolls. I'll go check. I'll tell you another another good option. But you're uh, you're honestly probably going to use the same one. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Yeah. I ideally a damage against elites. In a perfect 100% perfect world, you'd have that instead of arcane power on crit because you don't use arcane power in this build except for procking your black hole, which you always have arcane power up because you don't spend any with arcane torrent, for example. So that's the offhand, the convention, same thing, cooldown, or your other ring if you choose to equip the Grand Gear. If it has cooldown, being able to be rolled on it, um, then go for that. But make sure this has a high affix. Like, I would say hmm, maybe 190 or above for for the most out of this build. You want the highest you possibly can get, I would say. And then I use the Ashnagar's whatever blood bracer thing. Uh, this this really helps. So let's I'll just do a few few attacks here. You can see my, my shield. Oh I have to activate the, the buff first. That would help. So it's about four hundred something. Then you take it off. You know about 100, 100, or 200k, so it's like essentially half of what it is with this. This just helps you stay alive in the monk circle, which if you die, you miss a cycle. Dying is really bad for this class. If you die, you miss a cycle of Archon, and then you have to wait 12 or more seconds until your Archon is synced up with your convention with Gogok and all that, so it's, it's hard to recover from dying, even more so than the other build. So, damage potential is very high with this build. I, like I said, I cleared a 101, I think, when we were, we were doing pushing, but we are just like, hey, how, how high can we go with this? And we load up 101 and just destroyed it. And I have lots of, I have like 7 hours of 
me streaming this build so I can put that in the description as well also I'll probably after the fact I'll probably edit this and put in some some gameplay with some additional commentary but um, yeah that's basically it if you have any questions post them below I'll try to make more builds like not like this but uh, more build videos in general in the future if you guys are interested in this kind of thing so um, with that thanks for watching and here's some gameplay of the build in action alright so here's the VOD of that 100 I was talking about that was pretty clutch uh, one thing before I start this I'm gonna skip around a bit um, I'm gonna put this whole highlight on YouTube actually just in case you wanted to watch the entire I'm gonna skip around so I'll put the whole thing on there you can either watch it there or watch it on my twitch it's a highlight doesn't matter to me it's whatever um, make sure you're also when you do this you're in voice chat with your group because you basically have to make all the calls whether you skip an elite or you stay because they don't really otherwise they don't know if you're gonna stay and do another cycle there or if you need help moving the monk has to come with you you know all that kind of stuff it's just better to be in voice so you're not typing s in chat while you're trying to keep your go x decks up or try to start your cycle etc so yeah let's get right into this real quick so immediately when you start the rift you want to make sure your, t your team is actually there alright so you get in the rift you want to immediately start building up those gogok stacks to prepare for your first cycle and there's no ga uh, game of audio because I have a different setup for my audio so sorry about that but yeah as you see I got 15 stacks popped Archon in the, the fire cycle just to start it off you don't need to kill anything in there you just you're just doing that to prepare yourself for the rest of the rift and what that does is just sync up your your COE that for the rest of the you don't have to redo it all, at all so so I'm running out of Archon here I go back in the monk sink sank and then I'm just kinda hanging out using the teleport when it's up and staying alive basically until until you see now I've about a second of my Archon and I'm going in I'm popping it and there's way too much density but that's okay everything blew up I have 150 stacks everything's died which is really good that I didn't actually lag out the game because it's a big problem and as you see that elites like less less than half and that was I didn't even target him I just was shooting everywhere as you saw like that's the power of this build so yeah, keep keep saying the monk sank. You know, convention's about to pop. Same thing, repeat. Pop it and then go, and the elite's dead. Two cycles, hundred elite. I think they have around hundred eighty trillion or something. As you see here, this is a very dangerous. You know, this is a dangerous mob type. Dangerous affix is being arcane, and the little lightning balls. Can't remember if I die here or not, but nope, I'm alive. Okay, so you, get, you just teleport into the monk sank if. You, don't want to like test your luck against ranged mobs you know or test your luck against dodging arcanes and hit that black hole everything blows up it's just simple as that it's, it takes a little bit to get used to the cycles but once you do it's, it's pretty pretty simple you just gotta m make sure you don't miss a cycle because it wastes a bunch of time so that's that's the general idea of it let me skip ahead a little bit. Just fighting some more elites. I actually think I killed two elites here or three or something. Yeah, I killed one in there. There's two more in this pack. I think I killed both of them at the same time or something. Yeah, the the damage on a cycle is pretty insane once you get rolling. Yep, kill that guy, and this guy dies as well, I think. Or we might, we might just drag him along, because he has, I think he's Juggernaut. He was from the, from that pylon down there. Something like that. But yeah, huge burst damage, good at killing elites. Another thing, you have to run with a good Witch Doctor. If, if the Witch Doctor can't really kill trash at 100, then you're going to have a really tough time, because you need to, you need to just target the elites. It's not your job to kill the trash, although you, it's kind of a byproduct of just being 
uh, being an Archon Wizard, you, you shoot the Elites, the Elites sometimes are in the, w or the, the trash is sometimes in the way, so it's sometimes accidentally you kill the trash. And also trash is good for getting Archon stacks. And I believe this floor goes on for a while. I think we actually spawn the boss on this floor if I remember correctly. Or maybe we get it on a, we get another floor and it's the same, the same map I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that floor sucked. Got out of there real quick. Don't know why this is taking forever to buffer. But yeah, make sure. Also, when you're doing transitions, you're going from from pack to pack or floor to floor. Even if you're not killing anything, you still pop your archon when you're supposed to because it just it syncs up your conventions still. And you don't want to get off sync for for too long, because then you got to be like, "Yo, group, hold up! I gotta do. I gotta wait 12 seconds before I can kill this elite." Sorry, guys. And then you just you just annoy them at that point. These guys are super annoying because they have tons of health, but it's okay. I had a power. But let's go ahead. Basic basic riff stuff. We kind of run through most of this level because it was just hulks. Soul lashers and whatnot. And what's really what's really the purpose of this build, I would say, is yeah, we get this map again. What's really the purpose is killing the the Rift Guardian. Let me see if I can find the start of okay. So here's the start of the Rift Guardian. We are at I wanna say it's roughly two Two minutes or two and a half minutes, one of the two. Which normally is not enough time for a regular Archon Wizard to kill, th especially one of these bosses. So as you see, I'm stacking Spectral Blades with, uh, or stacking Stricken, my bad, with Spectral Blades. Keep the cycle going, and that was 200 trillion damage in one cycle. And I don't even have Stricken up yet. It's pretty insane. So then once you, oh another thing, once you are out of your stacks of Tails and your second set of Archon, just go in to melee range with Archon and start meleeing the boss and pushing your first Archon skill, the big blast kind of thing. It stacks stricken much faster than the beam does, and you're also already in range for your blades when you're out of it. So it doesn't, you don't have to like teleport into him or run all the way to him, just maximize your DPS kind of thing. And what I like to do too is, I, I think I do it here, I wait till I have the lightning again and then I teleport out and I beam him, yeah, a little bit. That wasn't optimal obviously because I got jumped on, but you can kind of do damage on your second lightning as well against RGs because it's just free damage at that point. You get a little little bit extra and you don't really need to stack the stricken all too much. Right here I get a big burn on him. No I don't. Next one. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it kind of sucks when you don't proc, you know. But what do you do? The damage makes up for an entire cycle of not proccing, in my opinion. So at this point, a regular wizard would be like, "All right, GG, we cannot do this, right? It's it's not going to happen. We have 52 seconds, and he's at 500 trillion health." But the beauty of this build is that you hit so hard that you can, like you saw the first cycle I did, about 200 trill roughly health to him. And here, another huge chunk. I was hitting for, I think, 20 trillion at the the start of the lightning, which is pretty absurd. And, yep, just maximize the damage with the lightning on the beam, and then going up to Spectral M for this last burn. At this point, the whole, it was funny, because they were all talking, like, oh, dude, we lost this rip, GG, rip key, all that stuff, you know? They're like, they're doubting me. But I'm like, no, dude, watch this. I get this last cycle and just destroy him. And that's and that's the VOD. So thanks for watching again. Uh, make sure you leave comments if you think I could do something better, if you think uh, anything else I could make you want to see. I don't know, some other build guide, my solo build guides, something like that. I'd be more than happy to. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.